how we doing folks I'll tell you what this is one of them days where you love when you live on the lake because it has rained all day here and uh, we've got incredible blues uh you know overcast day kind of evening tie setting up for us right here can't speak clearly but i can tell you this is the days that are awesome because there's very low amount of boats on the water you should have some peace and quiet we're gonna put some of these summer fish in the boat. That's what we're gonna do. Ozark rods, sniping braid, three pound fishing jigs. I just got done putting a bunch of jigs together, folks. Those uh, those new uh, Let's Go Fishing packs are ready to roll, so check them out on the website. That's an easy way to just get set up. This is kind of the big boy version right here because I just got a million of them right here. But I've got a nice condensed version called Let's Go Fishing, 80 jigs, plastics, all that great stuff that you will be happy at an incredible price. So uh, anyway, we're gonna active captain. We're gonna put it all together. We're gonna be put some fish in the boat. So thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. And uh, here we go. Thanks for watching Three Pound Fishing. Partnered up with these fantastic companies. Now, this episode is about kind of explaining why I do certain things. Maybe help some of the learning curve for the guys that are just picking up crappie fishing or trying to just getting started um, i choose a 10 footer because i think i can achieve everything with a 10 footer um, if i plan on doing any type of casting whatsoever a 10 footer is my magic number now a lot of people are using even seven eight footers so everybody's a little different but for me it's a 10 footer and i love it because i feel like i can pitch to it i feel like i can flip to it i feel like i can cast to it um, and i can vertical jig and when i vertical jig out of my boat i can get six feet out there which i think is ample the thing i struggle with with the, with the shorter rods with the, the seven footers and such i feel like you're really close to the boat and you have to get really on top of them to be able to vertical jig with them but um I also see the advantage though too with the, with the smaller rods. I think you can be pretty darn accurate and uh, obviously less room to maneuver, all that good stuff. But I use a seven footer. I use those arc rods. I love them. Let's put a fish in the boat here. So what you're seeing right there is just, it's a great amount of fish right there. They're pretty low uh, and they're pretty deep actually at 16 foot. I might position the boat a little bit better here for you. Um, so there's the fish. And so since we're right here, I'm just gonna drop down on them really quick before I even get better boat position. But that's me coming down. Now I use braid, not because I'm catching the biggest fish in the country, I'm not. Um, but I, because the bite is so sensitive and so small here, it really pays off in terms of the sensitivity of braid. Um, so you can set the hook absolutely immediate, immediately, which is the value of braid. There's no give in braid. So that is the main reason and I use sniping braid. On my home lake, I will use optimal. On any other lake, I'll use optimize. So when I go to Darbone and I go to Grenada, I use optimize. And I know like my buddy Jojo and a lot of the other guys, Tim Howell, those guys, those guys all guide on the big lakes. And you know, they love the, the 12 and the, and the, you know, the bigger ones. But for me, ooh, I love that's the mark. For me, it is optimal on my home lake and then optimize on all the other lakes. And that's a preference. That's the great thing about, I mean, the sniping braids. You have options of 10 optimize, a 12, a 15, a, a, a 20. And uh, you can see, I, it, I just barely felt it. And I don't think I would have felt it had I had fluoro or mono. And there we go. And we're letting them go, of course. Now that's the chartreuse pearl. Now why do I use, I mean, I use whatever the fish are gonna catch. So I, as much as I have my own brand of plastics and stuff, I can tell you that I'll use whatever's catching the fish. But you know, this chartreuse pearl is just flat out awesome. I love it. I always pair it with a smaller jig head, which is a 132nd. Um, I don't ever typically use anything else on my home lake, but on other lakes, I like the 116th. I get a little bit bigger. Um, but even on Darbone, I would use a 132nd. I just, I love that head. I love these jigs. I think they're freaking awesome. Now I pair it with a number seven split shot. The only time I don't pair it with a, I might pair it with a five if I have to get it down really deep. And this is pretty deep. Yeah. 
So right now I'm keeping these fish pretty close to me. And, and really the only reason is because they're so deep. I just like to go straight down on them opposed to waiting so long. And it's just a slow movement over. And I think I always will say that it's, it's all about being looking, it needs to look natural. There's one. And so, you know, it's no herky-jerky stuff. It's, it's a good solid fish. Anyway, I wanted to go back to the uh, the fishing line part. Now I watch it every day. You know, not every day, but on guide trips, I watch it a lot. And, uh, and and some people I give floral carbon to because that's what they're used to. You know, um, so I, I think it's important during a guide trip that people are comfortable. And so a lot of people will. Oh, oh, some people I'll give the floral carbon to that I think would, would benefit from it. But you can see that a lot of times they don't ever feel the bite. And, and that's the advantage of braid is I really do think that you feel it just the slightest. I mean, if he rubs up against it, this guy's really close to it. Ooh. You know, you can feel it with braid. So anyway, that's my, that's my, my, my talk on that. Um, Boat position is extremely important. Um, it might be number one. Um, getting your nose into the wind and not wasting, you know, fish and, you know, because to my, in my opinion, every pile is made up of extremely aggressive fish, then there's the slow fish, then there's the dormant fish, and there's, you know, so you have to take advantage of those first casts no matter what as best that you can if you don't have good boat position and you waste two or three casts on a pile uh, you might have wasted the aggressive fish without having all your everything in position so i'm all about position in the boat people can attest to that when they go on a guide trip with me um, i'll go around a pile to make sure that we're we're going to fish this you know correctly so that we can get as much as many fish off of it as we can That's a good start. We've been here a total of five minutes. <laughs> and we've got, I should have done a limits episode. I should have done a limits episode and see how fast we can get a limit. But we ain't doing that today. And uh, of course we could just count them, but regardless. Anyway, things are going great. I don't think, I don't, it doesn't bother me truly uh, which way a plastic goes on a jig head. I know that you're traditionally should be doing it something like this, right? That's the way it should be. The, the round bottom should be at the bottom uh, act, acting as the belly. But I'll tell you what I pay attention to is, you know, this is the chartreuse pearl jig right here. And it's made up of, it's a double laminate, right? It's two laminates. And, or it's called a laminate, I guess. And so I know that there's a big difference in color between that green and that black. So a lot of times, I'll flip them over just to get a different contrast so that when the fish sees it, when they're coming up, they're seeing a different, either the black or the green. So I'm messing with that just to see if that matters. And I'll tell you, sometimes it has. I mean, it truly has. I've got this color and then I've got the baby shad color. And I'll, I'll tweak which side. And I, I sometimes find that the lighter side will bite better than the black side. Um, so it might be in my mind. Of course, it could be just in my mind. But, um, you gotta look at the details to that to that extent. 12.8. All right, that's what we got right now, folks. And we got some rain falling now. All of a sudden, it's rained all day. It's deciding it wants to end the day rain. So we'll hopefully get some more fish in the boat before that happens, boys and girls. Right now, it's not holding many fish, but that's the season. Oh, but we got one. Oh, we had one. Dang it! Light bites are a regular occurrence on my, my lake. The, 
you know, something I don't really talk about that much is that the bite is very difficult. It's a very quick bite. I don't know if that's because we deal primarily with black crappie here or not, but if you don't have something sensitive like the rod, the, the braid, and all those things we talked about, you're not going to set the hook. And even sometimes when you have all that, you have to react so quickly. It's hard to set the, the hook sometimes. So uh, that's what happened there. But it was nice because if you saw that American fish tree, those fish came from under those branches. And I've always said the advantages of the American fish tree is those branches are so wide. The fish just sit right underneath them and you don't even see them. Now, we saw a couple of there, but uh, the ones that were active were actually sitting under the branches. They were the ones that came after them. So it's pretty cool. Well guys, the rain caught up to us, actually started falling pretty good and we had to get off the water. But hey, pay attention to the, some of the things that I did bring up. The Let's Go Fishing Pack on 3poundfishing.com is awesome. The sniping braid, check out the optimized. It's also on 3poundfishing.com. Those jigs, those plastics, everything is there at 3poundfishing.com. So check it out, folks. Appreciate it. Hope you're enjoying your summer. Have a great one. Thanks for watching 3 Pound Fishing partnered up with these fantastic companies.